Welcome to the Sizer online tutorial. In this tutorial, we will do a step-by-step -step example inside concept mode using the different features explained in the previous video of this series. Various versions of this project file are available for download in the description of this video. First of all, a good practice to adopt when starting a new project file is to select the desired unit system, which we will define as metric, as well as adjust the snap increment, which we will set as 100 cm. We will also be activating the CSA 08614 Annex B feature and set a fire resistance duration requirement of 1 hour. As for the default values, we will leave them as they are. Once the settings have been defined, we have to generate a grid either manually or automatically in order to be able to start designing columns, walls, beams and joists. For the purpose of this video, we will automatically generate grid from the edit option in the toolbar. We will define an additional level from the design option and set it to 6 meters, which will be considered as the roof. Now that the grid lines and level have been specified, we can insert columns on the first floor. The layout of these columns will consist of 6 columns in two lines with vertical spacing of 4 meters and horizontal spacing of 8 meters. For the exterior columns detail, 1, 3, 4 and 6, we will specify a number 2 grade of SPF timber with unknown width and depth, dry service condition and not laterally supported. For the remaining two interior columns, they will consist of number 3 slash stud of SPS built up columns with 38mm ply width and an unknown depth. They will be used in dry service condition as well and will be laterally supported on the Y axis. As for the walls, we will extend them from one column to the other extreme column in the north-south direction by clicking and dragging the mouse. The wall stud will consist of number 3 slash stud SPF lumber walls with 38mm width and unknown depth. We are going to detail them with 600mm spacing, dry service conditions and will be laterally supported on the Y axis. Again on the first floor, three main beams in the east-west direction will be designed, each of them resting on opposing columns. The two edge beam will have a 1 meter west cantilever with a 3 meter east cantilever, whereas the center beam will have a 1 meter west cantilever and a 4 meter east cantilever. All of the beams will consist of glue lamp EX as the material, made with spruce pine in a combination of 20 FEX. We will leave the width and depth as unknown and the beam will be laterally supported by floor joists. As for the fire resistance criteria, we will specify the number of sides exposed as 3 with a fire endurance rating of 1 hour without protection. Three additional beams will be inserted in our model on each side of the cantilever the west beam will be continuous over cantilever support and the two east beams will be skewed and simply supported. Since they will be supported by other beams, we first have to change their load transfer number to 1 so that their load will be transferred into the supporting edge and center beams. The beams added consist of 20FE spruce pine glue lamp E with unknown width and depth. Now, Let's move on with the design of the joist. Two groups of floor joists will be created, interior floor joist and exterior floor joist to be simulated as a deck. For the interior joist, they consist of number one, number two SPF lumber with 38 mm width and unknown depth, and 300 mm joist spacing with bridging. The following information will be checked, and as for the floor vibration, Joists will be overlaid with 15.5 mm sheathing, gnarled and glued. The exterior deck joists consist of the same material properties, except for the dry service condition that will be unchecked. The vibration criteria is defined as under 15.5 mm for sheathing thickness, strapping and bridging, gnarled and glued. They are displayed as follow. To change the J1 interior floor joist direction, you need to select it and specify the other direction from the toolbar feature. Similar steps for the roof layout are to be undertaken. For the purpose of this video, 
we will skip this part. A copy of the project file saved until this point is available in the description below. In order to view the model in its elevation view, you first need to select the following grid line and click the elevation view feature at the top. Concept mode allows the creation of slot members. In fact, inside the grid view, select the grid point that is to be elevated, M12 in this case, and specify its new elevation to 7 meters. We will also do this for a grid point M4. By returning to the elevation view, we can see that we have created a slot member. Now that the model has been created, we can add loads to the structure. We will start with the first story. In the loads view tab, we will define the load with a normal importance factor, an area 0.5 kPa dead load and 2.4 kPa live load. To add those loads, simply click and release on a corner of the load area, then repeat the same step for all corners. The same load configuration will be applied to the roof, with the exception of a 2.1 kPa snow load instead of the live load. A saved version of this project file is available in the description. See the next video in the series for a discussion on the output when the project file is run.